Joanna. It's, this is our first show like this. It this is. is lovely having you on with me. And we're going to talk about, a, it was a drama that was on over Christmas time. Um, and I saw it advertised and I knew you were in it and I thought, ah, here we go. It was called Men Up. Yeah, it was a, a great comedy drama, like a one-off film, about the first ever trials of a drug which then went on to become known as Viagra. And it followed, I think it was five men in Wales, and um, it actually was an offshoot of um, a drug they were taking for diabetes. And it had this unusual side effect, which they then went on to do research into. <laughs> and, um, you and mucky so... minded lot. Oh, you are awful. And it follows these five men from um, Wales, because I didn't even know that in the 90s, the trial took place in Morriston Hospital in Swansea, which is where I'm from. No! I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so I was working with all these fab Welsh um, actors who I've worked with over the years, Paul Rees, um, Stefan, who plays yeah. um, Dave Coaches and Gavin and Stacey, Mark Lewis-Jones, and, um, and it's all of these men and then the relationships with their wives and what they've gone through, and they take part in the first ever trials to see if it will work for them or not, and then what happens to them. And I play the nurse on the trial. You do. So here, here is a little clip just in case you didn't catch it at Christmas. The trial is open to diabetic men between the ages of 40 and 65. It will run for around four weeks in total and is completely confidential. Here's an information sheet. You can take it on with you, have a read, come back with any questions. There'll be dirty videos to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then up, the show is on BBC iPlayer, if you want to catch up on that, uh, BBC iPlayer right now. Um, it's an interesting story to tell, though, isn't it? Because, as you yeah. say, it was a byproduct of another drug. Mm. And but it, it was sort it of was... changed men's health. Well, it did, completely. And, I mean, it was very interesting following, because the five actors, they're all based on, you know, the real-life stories. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because you realise that men don't talk about their emotions or their feelings and, you know, what, what that does to them and how it impacts on the whole of their lives. And so, you know, I found it very interesting, you know, in that way and, and playing one of the nurses and having to look after them, although being very, you know, straight talking and dealing with all of these things. But yeah, it was just very interesting in that men just don't talk to each other. Yeah, you see, I think men's health suffers from this stereotype where um, sex, intimacy, performance is only discussed when it's outstanding. Um, and, <laughs> sorry, what I did to my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so, you know, and anything less than makes them feel like less of a man. Whereas if I think women would be much more willing to talk about low libido and some of those associated problems and perhaps not feel embarrassed or not a woman. But you, you know, know what? I think that's for a darker reason. I think mm. it's because... When men lose their libido, it's like it's like a travesty, you know. Whereas when women talk about it, it's almost kind of expected. It's like, right. well, you're not having any babies anymore, and, and there's not enough mm. understanding about women needing a good sex life to have a good and happy mentally and physical life. There is an orgasm gap here, guys, and it's just <laughs> it's not fair. I mean, you know, how quickly was that up on the shelves? You can walk into any pharmacy now mm -hmm. and just buy Viagra. Yeah. You know, women still have to fight to get testosterone, and mm -hmm. testosterone is a really important thing for post-menopause to have any sex drive. And I think, well, as we know, you know, medical research for women is so, so... Is, is, is not given the same attention yeah. as it is for men. But mm -hmm. I agree on the fact that all men are supposed to want sex all the time, which is yeah. totally ridiculous. We, should, we all have different libidos. Yeah. But I just wish there was an, as much importance given to women's desire for an orgasm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know I was going to say that when I came yeah. to work. <laughs> you sound very passionate. Can you fill this gap? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just think it's, I just think it's given so much more importance for a man. Well, there, yeah. there like... is five times more research into erectile dysfunction, which affects 19% of men, than into premenstrual syndrome, debilitating for lots of women, which yeah. affects. 90% there of you Oh, wow. Go. That's just okay. terrible. Yeah. So, everything yeah. tested 
on men and in for the, men as well. The original I mean, medical book absolutely was always being on Antidepressants, on everything's not everything tested on women. No, yeah. It's fascinating, actually, when you lo start looking into it. Yeah, and it that's is. not going to change, is that... That's... Well, well, I think the whole thing starts shouting a bit louder at Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she started it today. Marching. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. demand our orgasms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, girls. You can't do it. Down, down, down. <laughs> but you can't go into a chemist now. You and Joe. You can't go into a chemist and get one. Yeah, you can't. But you can't go into a chemist, can you? And just as a woman, go and get the equivalent of no. Viagra, can you? Yeah, and there's no reason to go to the done doctors. Yeah. You have to do this. You have to do you that. Can only there's a whole thing. To testosterone on private prescription yeah. as a woman, can't you? Yeah. So you have to pay for it. Yeah. But women have yeah. to fight so hard for ourselves, don't we? Because earlier on, you were talking about podcasts um, oh. in, when we were having a chat. Yeah. You? you were talking about podcasts, and it yeah. seems very much that women, we have to do our own thing to get hurt. Yeah, I think, you know, now there's definitely an increase on social media and, and podcasts where women are talking about um, pleasure uh, and not just sex for reproduction and the orgasm gap, but not academic, published scientific papers. This is just women sharing stories and trying we to normalise. We were supposed normalize. to die, mm, yeah. you know, after childbirth, a few years after that, we were supposed to, but because of medical science and other <laughs> yeah. ways, we live longer. I don't and, know if I'm going to live much longer just... with my four children. <laughs> I feel like I could <laughs> pop off quite soon. <laughs> She's not slept since the day before Christmas. <laughs> slept since the 23rd of December. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, dear. In 2022 alone, 4.35 million Viagra prescriptions were handed out. How many? Wow. 4.35 million. <sighs> yeah. Interesting fact. <laughs> wow. <laughs>